Yes, as you're seeing for the first time on my game recaps, if you've been new to my game recaps, typically my tradition, whether we suck or we're good when that's rare, I wear my Chicago Bears jersey because I'm just that good of a fan to do that. Despite how bad this team is and how much I don't want to wear this jersey because one guy is just clearly pissing me off more than anything. Anyways, like you saw, typically I would wear a Cleo Mack jersey or my orange Walter Payton jersey. Well, this week for Christmas, because it was yesterday, I got a Justin Fields jersey. So obviously I had to rep Mr. Number One. Sadly, Mr. Number One didn't play today. Hopefully he plays next week against the crappy Giants, who he might be matched up against his former Georgia teammate in Jake Fromm. The Bears should win this game handily. And I'm guessing my prediction on the Bears' freaking record was wrong, too. I thought these clowns would be 3-14, and 14, if not 4-12. Or, no, 4-13, and 13, my bad. But these clowns are probably going to be 6-11. and 11. What do doodle do? I swear to God. If the, somehow the McCaskies and Ryan Pays or somebody, mostly McCaskies, George, and Ted, think that's good enough for Matt Nagy to come back next year, well, then you can consider me out of this damn team's business for the following year. I said it before and I'll say it again. Matt Nagy is somehow stupidly retained as the head coach for the Chicago Bears next year and the 2022 season, I will be not watching the Chicago Bears football game. I don't care if you say, yeah, that's cap, that's lies. No, it's going to be facts. You come back to this channel, you will not see any game recaps till Matt Nagy has been relieved of his duties. Anyways, the Bears somehow escaped the jaws of defeat. And the Seattle Seahawks pulled an ultimate Bears football type of game. And the Bears come back from behind and beat the Seattle Seahawks 25 to 24. <laughs> oh, good job. Good job. Yay. Matt Nagy got his W. I was wondering if the Bears were going to lose this game because they lost this game and then they lost next week against the Giants. That means they would have back to back five-game losing streaks in the same damn season. Well, that can't possibly happen now, so my wish is completely screwed. Great. I wish that happened. That would have further confirmed he needs to go. Like he is now. I hope. But apparently there was some sort of rumor coming from Ian Rat Report saying that the Bears, you know, might, you know, fire Matt Nagy after the Seattle Seahawks game. Where I've not heard that report how many damn times this season already? Anyways, that's definitely not happening now. Because McCall's going to be like, see, he did it. He won the big tough game from behind. That means he should be able to stay for a few more weeks. Oh, brother. If the Bears were smart, let me tell you this. If the Bears are smart. They wouldn't buy into a freaking win despite how crazy the win was and how shocking the win was you don't say this you sell this to Matt Nagy you give this this win essentially should be Matt Nagy's last coach game for the Bears he got his little Christmas victory you know freaking W isn't that good enough he so guess what you know what that means he got his Christmas day victory or you know let's my bad he got his Thanksgiving day victory in the jaws defeat of potentially getting fired against the Lions now he got his Christmas Day victory, even though it's not Christmas Day, it's post-Christmas Day. Whatever, same damn thing. He got his post-Christmas Day victory on a Sunday. What's next? He stays around for the Giants week, and he gets his New Year's victory. That means he's won every damn holiday game this season from the jaws of defeat when he potentially could be getting fired that same exact week. Wow. Good God. That just utterly shocks me. But as I was saying in my tirade, just because the Bears won this game doesn't mean the McCaskies or anybody else in that crummy organization, that is the Chicago Bears, should look at this win and take some merit in it and think like, you know, maybe Matt Nagy can stay. No. There's a new rule in the NFL implemented. By the time week 16 comes around, if you are 
coachless and you want to start interviewing candidates, well, you can do that starting in week 16. So here's what the Bears do. You tell Matt Nagy, good job, Matt. Good job. You got your Christmas Day victory. That's good enough for you. We'll send you right out the door and we'll make sure we won't miss you one bit. You fire him today, right now, and tell him, thank you for your services. I hope you enjoyed your last win as a coach of the Chicago Bears. You fire him. You announce it immediately tomorrow morning to say Bear fan suspense, whatever time Central Time Chicago is, or whatever breaking news, you want to do it at 6 a.m. freaking Eastern Standard Time Zone, fine, fire him that time. I don't care. You fire him, then you can start inter interviewing candidates going into the next week. He got his W. Stop feeling sorry for this clown that can't do his job right. This is the same idiot that wants to play call a Wildcat play on the fucking goal line. Oh, God. Anyways, let's run through the stats real quick before I get my thoughts and my analysis of what I saw from the game. Nick Foles, who came in for services of Justin Fields because of his injury, he was inactive today, but before the game, like two days before the game, he was announced as questionable, and there was reports saying, well, if he is able to suit up, then guess what? That means he can be the backup. I already made a video about that topic. If you want to go check it out, even though it's way after the game's over, go ahead. I'll maybe may, I'll link it in the, in the outro of my video. Whatever. Maybe I'll do that. If you want to get my thoughts on that whole situation, I'm not going to get into that. It's already pissed me off anyways. Nick Foles had to come in. Again, I asked this question. We're already paying Nick Foles crazy about a butt tons money to be the third string quarterback doing nothing, just being a quarterback coach to Justin. Why the fuck did we sign Andy Dalton for 10 mil? Jesus. I'll tell you one thing. At least Nick Foles did something Andy Dalton couldn't do as a backup quarterback, and that's win a damn game. His stat line was 24 for 35 for 250 yards and one TD. He should almost got he should have got picked. He should have potentially fumbled the game away, but hey, whatever. He got the job done and he did what a backup's supposed to do. Go out there and win the game for your team. That's what he did. He put the Bears in right situations. He didn't do too much to where he hurt the Bears. And guess what? He did what he needed to do. Came in, got the W, good. Now, can we hand the duties back to Justin? He should be good to go against the Giants. Please and thank you. I would expect him to play against a bad Giants team anyways. But yeah, fine. His touchdown pass to Jimmy Graham, cool. Take it. And that's, that's another problem. Oh, Cole Komet, Jimmy Graham, two tight ends on the team. They don't want to catch the ball for Justin Fields, but they definitely want to catch the ball for Nick Foles. That's just something I just wanted to have in my head just to make a mention. You want to freaking catch a contested catch for the lead, for the touchdown to essentially put you down by one point, Jimmy Graham. But last week against the Vikings, you couldn't make a contested catch for Justin. Yeah. Okay. David Montgomery, he could have had a much better running game today because, well, he should have had damn near three, four touchdowns today. But whatever, I digress. 21 carries for 45 yards. I think he should have got more carries like Rashard Penny had. And they should have stuck with the run because Rashard Penny freaking had seven, he had lesser carries than him, but he had more yards, 135 yards and one TD. Freaking David Montgomery should have had more yards rushing. I hate Matt Nagy's offense where he wants to give the ball to Nick Foles 35 times, but wants to only give it to David Montgomery 21 times. <laughs> David Montgomery should have easily had 100 yards rushing today with the way he was running the ball, especially in snowy weather. Uh, as I go to the other box score people for receiving, uh, Khalil Herbert, again, another one-two punch guy. Uh, he got 21 yards and one TD, two carries. I would expect him to get more carries because I think he deserves it. Again, him and Montgomery are nice one-two punch. Why we do not utilize them together, no idea. Oh, wait, 
Oh, I know. Nagy, he doesn't like to run the ball. Clown. Uh, David Montgomery led receiving. Seven receptions for 61 yards. Uh, Darnell Mooney, five receptions for 57 yards. Okay, yeah, Darnell Mooney, Darnell Mooney occasionally dropping passes. Good God. Can we get a number one receiver? Jesus, he's a good number two. I'll tell you that. He's a good number two. But this man's dropping too many freaking passes. Cole Command, four receptions for 49 yards. So if you've seen any other pass recaps, you already know my thoughts about Cole Command. It's nice to see that he's catching balls from another quarterback, not Justin. Why, Cole? Why, faithful Bear fan? Jimmy Graham, another guy who can't catch for Justin Fields. Two receptions for 30 yards and one TD. Obviously, the TD that put them down by two. Uh, Marquise Goodwin, I think he just returned. Two receptions for 23 yards. Demir Bird, one catch for 11 yards. He made a very, really good damn catch. I can't believe I'm saying that myself about Demir Bird. He made a freaking catch of the year type of thing. When he freaking came down, caught the ball with one hand, had legit complete possession of it, and came down and got the two-point conversion, which eventually put the Bears up by two or by one to win them the game. Uh, Daz Newsom caught his first uh, catch of the year, uh, which I thought was nice. Khalil Herbert caught a catch, and Damian Williams had to catch a catch because, yeah, great. Uh, in terms of the offense, it was nice. It was a lot better in the second half because they were moving the ball down the field pretty much every damn drive after that first series on offense to start the second half. They were moving the ball up and down the field, and it was honest to God similarly to the uh, freaking Vikings game. The only problem where it gave them problems where they couldn't make uh, you know more touchdowns and score more points because the Bears should have easily scored 40 points in this game or at least 30 if I'm being generous. The problem is penalties, bad offensive line play, stupid play calling. What else can I think of? Drop passes. I don't nothing else. Nothing else. Again, uh update. Tevin Jenkins got hurt. So Tevin Jenkins hurt again. He hurt his shoulder, apparently. Which only moved Jeremy Manny Fetty. Yes, the coward to uh left tackle, who originally was starting for at right tackle, but because Larry Bourne. No, don't know why. Let's not give your rookie right tackle anything. Jermaine Fetty, let me just tell you this before I move on to the next point. He is one of the worst offensive tackles I've ever seen in my freaking life. This man was getting blown up by Carlos Dunlap with utter ease. And this is the guy you elected to be captain for this game because we like to switch up captains every week for every for some damn week. The captains this week were Pat O'Donnell, Jermaine Fetty, and Bruce Irving. Two of those players, former Seattle Seahawks, because, yeah, we need two former Seattle Seahawks to get their sweet revenge on their former team for cutting them and setting them loose. Yeah, that's why Bruce Irving got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty at the end of the game, because he was taunting the Seattle Seahawks team, showing him, you should have never cut me, you should have never cut me. Another reason why this team is so damn bad. They're undisciplined as fuck. But Jermaine Fetty sucked ass. Not shocking, but he wants to get up in Tevin Jenkins' face last week for freaking getting up in a Vikings defender's face for, I don't know, um, trying to protect his quarterback. Oh, too soft. I see. Another thing that needs to change. Oh, dude, speaking of the Vikings, did you see the Vikings lose to the Rams? Oh. Wonders. The Bears could have easily put 30 points, 40 points on that Vikings defense. But no, we just couldn't score any TDs or couldn't score any points straight up. Shows you how overrated the Viking, the overrated the Vikings are. Completely shut down Justin Jefferson, despite him having over 100 yards. They didn't do nothing. So yeah. Um, in terms of the Seattle, uh, it, look, all in all, offense, it was fine. But there's still some things to see with this offense that are still like, what the fuck are we doing here? I'm scratching my head. Why, 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 why? 
Holy shit, why? Um, like the Wildcat on that second down in the goal line. Like, you're actively giving it away that you're running the ball. Like, why? The two QB sneaks back to back. Yeah, I know you ended up getting it, but technically you can say we should have not got it. The refs gave us a generous spot. Why not just run the ball with David Montgomery right up the middle? And it's funny enough, the one drive we scored a touchdown, I think scored seven points. Matt Nagy surprisingly learned his lesson and gave the ball to David Montgomery right up the middle. Oh, nice of you to finally realize that. A drive, a, a whole drive later. Again, there's questionable play calling and stuff like that. Yada, 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 whatever. But like I said, that's it. Um, defensively, I thought the defense was all right. Uh, the only problem I saw with the defense was the fact that every time the Seattle, that every time we scored, they let Seattle go down the field and score. Other than really, which they stopped him, which was the part when uh, Russell Wilson took a very, and I mean very bad sack. It got uh, Robert Quinn his 17th sack of the season, um, which is good for him. Um, and it only presumed to put uh, Jason Myers in a position where he missed the field goal, which if you go check my Twitter, um, what is it? That's where I said, that's where I made my tweet of, that's the reason why Seattle lost this game. Um, they didn't take advantage of the missed opportunities the Bears were having. And then with C uh, Russell Wilson taking that very bad sack, uh, which set them going backwards. Jason Myers, yes, a 39-yard field goal. You should make it. But then again, this isn't snowy weather. So I don't know. But again, regardless, you're a kicker. Your job is to make the kick. Um, he's supposed to make it. And if they had made it, it would have been 27-25 at the final score. So that means the Bears would have been down two possessions and they would have ended up losing this game. But because Russell Wilson takes a very bad sack, um, it presumes Jason Myers to trot out to the field and miss a field goal. And that's essentially what dictated the reason why Seattle Seahawks lost the game. But what am I know? The Seattle Seahawks are a bad team. Anyways, Russell Wilson was 16 for 27 for 108, one, 181 yards, two, two TDs. Shard Penny, who was probably the best player on the team, 17 carries for 135 yards and a touchdown. I think his name's David Dallas. Uh, four yard, four carries for 15 yards. Wilson had two carries for 13. Uh, Eskeridge, one carry for seven yards. In terms of receiving, um, um, Everett had four receptions for 68 yards and one TD. DJ Metcalf, only two receptions for 41 yards and one TD. What the hell is going on with that? If I'm DJ Met Metcalf. You ask for a trade out of there immediately. I think Seattle's going to blow it up anyways. I think Russell Wilson's going to want out. Uh, I think Metcalf's going to eventually want out too. So, yeah. Um, Tyler Lockett, three receptions for 30 yards. Dallas, four receptions for 23 yards. Eskeridge, two receptions for 10 yards. Swain, one reception for nine yards. And Penny and Parkinson were targeted um, one time each, but they didn't catch the ball at all. Um, so yeah, um, listen, they utterly freaking, I thought the defense was fine for the most part. You yeah, hold the freaking Seattle Seahawks, a bad one at best to, well, I guess 24 points is somewhat all right, but you're still giving up 21 points. That's over 20 points. I'd rather keep that 20 or lower, but whatever you beat a bad Seattle team. Um, and Robert Quinn's best 17 sack came at the right moment. Um, because it made freaking Russell Wilson try to spin out of it and he takes a bad sack. Like, if I'm a Seattle Seahawks fan, you look at that sack and you're like, what the fuck was Russell Wilson doing there? Why'd you take a sack? At least throw the ball away. Um, but he took a sack. He, they lost yards. Just Meyer comes up, misses the field goal. That ultimately loses you the game. And because of the Bears actually eliminated the Seattle Seahawks from playoff contention. So it's already bad enough that, well, Russell Wilson's in a losing season. Well, Seattle's not going to make the playoffs this year. Huh. Well, that's what I definitely said. Russell Wilson's getting out of there. If I'm Russell Wilson, get out of Seattle now. I'm after the season's over. Demand a trade like you were earlier this year. But seriously, take it serious. Get out of there because Seattle's going nowhere. I think it's time for him. I think it's time he go finds himself a new home um, and he goes somewhere else. Um, and stuff like that, because they're clearly not going to be as good um, 
going farther into the future. Um, and clearly he has like some sort of beef going on with Pete Carroll. So yeah, that's, I, I think he's going to demand a trade next off season, but all in all, my uh, ending thoughts on the game, the bears, even though I don't want them to win because I just want them to lose so they can just have a higher chance of firing Matt Nagy. So because the McCaskies are really dumb enough to actually think this is a quality enough win. And they'll also be the same people that when the Bears eventually beat the Giants next week, because I saw the Giants. I don't watch the game, but seeing that the Giants can only muster up around 10 points against the Eagles, yeah, the Bears are going to win that game. And they should win that game easily. Um, despite who's playing at quarterback, whether it's Mike Glennon or Jake Fromm. Um, so, like I was saying, the owners and the McCaskies, George is stupid enough to think that 6-11 and 11 would be a decent enough record for Matt Nagy to stay here for maybe one more year, which I think is asinine. Get rid of him now. This is why I said at the start, this is his little Christmas Day victory. You fire him now. Tell him thank you for what you've done. Fire, but you're fired. You know, thank you for everything. We're going to go in a different direction. You fire him tonight. You announce it tomorrow, first thing in the morning. You start your head coach search for whatever candidates that are out there that you're interested in, which really should be a coach like a Jim Harbaugh. You want to include Ryan Day, fine. Not guys like Leslie Frazier. Good God. Give me head coaching candidates. Head coaching candidates. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, but all in all, I will have to give the Bears credit where credit is due. It looked like the Bears were going to lose this game, but several good, great plays by the Bears managed to put them in a position to win this game. Jimmy Graham made a great catch. Okay, I expect you to do that. Dem Demir Bird probably made catch of the year. I didn't expect that, and that got the Bears to win the game. Just because I don't sound like I should be overjoyed that the Bears won, I'm happy that the Bears won. Good. I get to see a Bears victory. Fine. But in my grand scheme, the reason why I sound so nonchalant, so monotone, is because I don't believe this win's going to do anything for this team. Because guess what? This shouldn't change how Nagy's hot seat is. He should still be getting fired at the end of the year. If anything, this win just continues to delay the inevitable. That's why I continuously say in my recaps, Fire him now instead of waiting until week 18 or, yeah, week 18 or 17 or whatever. Yeah, no, week 17. Um, to only fire him then. Like, stop delaying the inevitable. Get rid of him now. He got his victories. He's got his moral stuff. All right, cut him loose. What are we doing saving our time with him? Another issue. He's so indisciplined. He's such an undisciplined football team. Guys getting unsportsmanlike conduct. I was actually shocked that, well, the refs said Bruce Irvin has called for unsportsmanlike conduct at the end of the game after the fourth down. I thought they were just going to give the Seattle Seahawks a free first down after that. I literally thought that. I literally thought that the Seattle Seahawks were going to get a free first down and get a second chance and maybe getting down the field and kicking a field goal to win the game. If that would have happened, I would have lost my damn mind on this video. And that's when you really ultimately fire Matt Nagy. You still do, but that would have been even a further indicament. Like the other indicament of the fact that you want to start washed up veterans like Jermaine Fetty over Larry Borum, who's a promising potential future at right tackle. You want to start Artie Burns and Kendall Vildor over Thomas Graham Jr., who showed out in the Vikings game, who I thought other than the DJ Metcalf, crap, you know, touchdown, which I don't really blame him because you put a rookie on a freaking all-pro receiver. Who does that? Oh, wait, your dumbass defensive coordinator does. Sean Doofy Desai. He did. So that happens. Um, but after that, Thomas Graham, I thought, played a solid enough game. So that's two weeks. Thomas Graham had a solid, solid week. Again, why are we trusting guys like Artie Burns and Kendall Vildor? Screw those guys. Regardless, um, the Bears found a tough way to win a game, and they won the game against a bad, a bad Seattle Seahawks team, which 
this team should do. They have at least a decent enough talent to beat bad teams or mediocre teams at best. The problem is they keep shooting themselves in the foot and they're also held back by their damn head coach who can't, who's bad at his job, who damn near 99% of the fan base can do a better job um, than he can. And they actually come out victorious more than often. But the Bears found a tough way to beat a bad Seattle Seahawks team. And next week, they go on to play a very bad New York Giants team who, for some dumb reason, I'm thinking the McCaskey ownership is bad. The Mara ownership is even worse. Those fools said Joe Judge and Daniel Jones are coming back next year. Like, they're not watching the travesty that's going on there. Yeah, thank God I'm not a New York Giants fan. Holy crap. They don't have a franchise quarterback. They don't have the coach. It's already bad enough that I have to deal with the coach, but I know that I potentially have the franchise quarterback of the future. I'm wearing his freaking jersey for crying out loud. Jesus. If I was a Giants fan, I'd be freaking pissed off and I'd be done. Good God. Um, but regardless, the, it's a, a win's a win. And that makes the Bears 5 and 10 now. If I go check my dang thing again. Yes, 5 and 10. The Bears will probably beat the Giants next week to make them 6 and 10. And they'll lose in the final game of the season to the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota to make them 6 and 11. Which, at the end of that game, fire Nagy, get it over with. Because this is what this win did. It just essentially solidified that if the Bears weren't convinced on fire Nagy now, well, they're going to keep him till the end of the year and then they're going to let him go at the end. This was the type of win where, guess what, the Bears organization for some dumbass reason think, well, we can't fire this guy after he picked up a W because they're idiots and they're just not obviously book smart to realize, you know what, let's stop just delaying the inevitable. Let's just get rid of him now. He got his victory. Let's send him home for the holidays and say you got your victory with your team. But this win just told me, that Matt Nagy is going to definitely stay in the long run if there was any other chance of Matt Nagy being fired. The only hope I have of Matt Nagy getting fired is the fact that the Bears want to get their head coaching search started. So, yeah, that's the thing there. But other than that, guys, um, that's all I got to say about this game. So, yeah. Anyways, um, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on the Chicago Bears beating the Seattle Seahawks. What are some takeaways that I missed that you think that you saw out there? As well as um, hit that subscribe button. You want to get more Chicago Bears content? I think I said this before. I'll say it again. I'm probably going to just make a whole new channel after the offseason. But, like, once the offseason gets started off, and it will strictly be sports and stuff like that. Um, because, obviously, if you're on my main channel here, I talk anime and movies and other stuff like that and it kind of mixed in sports but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a different a, a new channel that just covers sports and I won't just talk about my favorite teams um I know I said I talk clippers on here but I haven't been paying attention well I pay attention strong enough but I don't really want to I'll probably talk more sports like maybe more baseball football and hockey and talk about league round stuff and everything so yeah but other than that that's kind of all I gotta say so um, I guess you can say, oh, whenever that happens, I'll make an announcement on my video on my channel saying that I'm a, that I have a new um, channel, um, this new channel that all my sports content is going to be going over there, um, which will keep this channel that you're watching right now strictly only to movies, anime, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, but other than that, um, Bears win this game. So at least we can all sleep peacefully tonight. Hopefully we can sleep even more peacefully. Matt Nagy's fired first thing in the morning. Um, so, yeah. But other than that, guys, again, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Um, and hit the subscribe button if you want to get more Chicago Bears content. All right, as well as my movie content or anime content if you're into those stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's kind of all I got to say here. I'm trying to think of something that I have left to say, but not really much. I don't know. I don't know what else I had left to say. But, um, oh, hopefully you guys enjoyed your Christmas and everything. Um, and hopefully you guys have a great and safe New Year's.
um, and stuff like that. And I'll be back next week for Chicago Bears recap against the New York football giants, where I expect the Bears to win that game. They somehow lose to the bad New York Giants football team, I swear. Oh, God. Oh, at least there'll be like one more week left and then I'll be done with this and we can just see the announcement. I get an announcement to ESPN saying Matt Nagy has been fired from the Chicago Bears and then I'll be throwing the biggest video party on the channel. Other than that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your night or evening or day whenever you come to this video. Until then, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe out there. Peace.